Good morning, Mike. Morning. Are you ready for this? No. Me neither. Just in case you guys don't know, we did mention about a long trip that we're about to get ready on. I just wanted to let you guys know we're heading out now, and uh, we'll see you guys shortly when we get there. But Mike, uh, any thoughts about this, what, f nearly four-hour trip we're about to hit? Long drive. Yeah, very long drive. It took us forever just to freaking get packed up today, guys. So, just want to let you guys know that we're on our way. And hopefully we're going to have some fishing and some kayaking for you guys this time. And maybe if we see some cool stuff when we get there, maybe uh, we could take some pictures along the way. Because we're going to do some breaks along the way. Cheers, everyone. See you in a little Four hours later. Water State Park. What we're looking at behind me, look at this beautiful lake. This is called Brookfield Lake. This thing is gorgeous, man. Look at this. Did you know this park was created in 1949 for veterans? Wow, that's veterans awesome. Veterans who fought in World War II, no, no less. And the cool thing about it is it was four counties around this area. Each contributed a piece of land to the overall acreage for this place. They created this, plus a Whitewater Memorial, plus there's a dam we're going to go look at. There's going to be some boating. We're trying to do some boating, but we got rained out when we first got here. So, you know, we're kind of playing. The damn rain, God, uh, struck us down again. Oh, and this is also one of this. This is also a season of the cicada. They call it uh, Brood X now, I guess. And this is where masses of cicada come out. And this is every 13 to 17 years, guys. And they make so much noise. I mean, it can get up to 100 decibels. Imagine covering your ears on that. That's like a lot. And they brood for like what a couple hours, and then they die, and then they start the breeding cycle all over again. So all this, all this big racket we're hearing in the background is the cicadas through their mating stuff. Busy people, right? Woohoo! I know. Anyway, uh, this is going to be interesting because there's a lot of interesting foot things to focus on at this particular park, and hopefully we'll be able to get you some good footage. Hopefully, do some boating this time if the if the weather allows, and just enjoy enjoy the views and let you guys enjoy, enjoy it with us. Take care guys. One more thing too guys, just to let you know, this is going to be a little bit different than a lot of the other um, episodes that we've done. Um, because of the weather and the way it's been kind of crummy, what we're going to do is this is going to be more like a tour more than anything else. Hopefully you'll guys, you guys will enjoy this format. We are going to try and do it in an episode type format for you guys.
Hey Mike. What are you doing, man? What's that? Greenhouse. Wait, you mean we have a greenhouse? Yep. Holy cow. What kind of greenhouse is it? Coleman. Oh. Oh, there it is. Oh, hey everyone. Just wanted to show you some of the new gear we got. This is supposed to be a 60 second instant setup greenhouse. Let's see if it'll go up in 60 seconds. 10 minutes later. Well, it's not bad looking guys. Yeah, definitely took more than uh, 60 seconds. Maybe because we had to unpackage it. We had to open it up, set up the guidelines. It's pretty nice, so if it rains and we want to cook, like you see our luck lately is that we get rain down a lot. So, yeah. So Mike, what do you think? Is this uh, something that you think is uh, is advertised falsely saying 60, uh, 60, uh, 60 seconds? Well, like you said, we just unboxed it. First time ever opening it up, so didn't know how hard it was going to be. Turned out it was upside down, so we had to flip it all over and then fix it. So, yeah, ain't that crazy? We got it up. Yeah. Hey, so it did go up. Maybe the next time we do it, it'll only be the 60 seconds like they say, which should be cool. But just wanted to show you guys some of the new gear that we have. We are going to be setting up a new tent that we got as well. And if you like, if you leave a comment, we'll tell you where we got the equipment and how much we paid for it. But right now, we're going to get ready to set up the tent and we'll show you how that goes when we get to it. Talk to you in a little bit, guys. There it is guys, our new tent to help us for season two. Hopefully this guy will last uh, another season because our Kelty was a great tent. Unfortunately, we put a lot of, of use and abuse on that one. So that one unfortunately is all gone. So Mike, yeah. What's up? what do you think of this new tent, man? I think it's gonna do the job very yeah. well. Give us room to whatever work we need to do inside the tent and still have room to sleep and still have room for all our gear. Yeah. Yeah, it was rough, guys. It started raining on us again and it poured like, like just like all hell broke Can't loose. You tell? I mean, look at that. We're yeah. all soaked. Completely freaking soaked. Hats <laughs> were soaked. Tent was soaked because we didn't get a chance to get the fly on in time. It was, it was a mess. But this is, uh, what, this is uh, what happens, guys. This is the life of, when you, of the outdoorsmen. Anyways, guys, uh, we'll talk to you in a little bit, okay? Thank See you, you then.
Hey everyone, how you doing? If you remember when we went to Potato Creek, which was one of our first episodes from our first season, we were looking at some cabins and how cool they are. Well, here we are at Whitewater Memorial and, <coughs> excuse me, we have some more cabins and these ones, look at these ones, these ones are much larger. So the nice thing is that we, we encountered a bunch of rain again, which seems to be our, like, our MO, I guess, is to get rained on all the time. But we have found, uh, found a couple of cool things. We found these nice cabins, which are going to be real nice. So if you want to bring a family up here and you want to do some glamping and you may not have an RV or a, you don't want to set up a tent, you can come here rent one of these. And I think some of these can sleep five to six people. You got a little fire pit out there. You got a table so you can enjoy yourself. So I know COVID is still kind of rough on people and we're getting to the point where COVID is becoming less and less of an issue in the news and stuff. But it doesn't mean that you still have to be locked up in your house and not do anything. Nice thing about a lot of these campgrounds, as we've seen, as we've gone through a lot of these campgrounds, is they've been pretty, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> something in the throat, I think I swallowed a spider or something. Ugh. Anyways, so when you get, so a lot of these places, they're pretty abandoned. So if you're worried about keeping your social, social distance and everything, it's not a problem. Because even when we went to Summit Lake, which was the last park we did, there wasn't many people there. And here... Um, you know, at Whitewater Memorial, we're not finding a lot of people either. I think I might have counted maybe 20 people. So if you think about it, these sites are so far spaced that you're not going to be encountering anyone who may possibly have the COVID or some, some other illness that you may not want to pick up. Or get yourself a cabin and then it's just you and your family and the ones that you are sure don't have uh, the COVID um, disease. And also there's the vaccine. So there you got that too. So we're going to try and do some more footage for you guys. We're trying to take uh, this uh, pile of lemons and turn it into lemonade for you guys. So I'll see you in the next section.
Welcome everyone. This is something we've been wanting to see for a while. Look at this. This is a dam. And the funny thing is a lot of these state parks have dams on them and that's what created their lakes. What is this called, Mike? Is this called the spillway? It's a spillway. Look at that. And the interesting thing is, this is like I was just said a minute ago, this is not the only park that we found dams at. The park we just came through from our season opener for Summit Lake had a dam. We couldn't get to it because of the rain wouldn't allow us to take a kayak because that would have took us right by the dam and we could have looked at it. The other place, if you guys remember way back when we started last year, Potato Creek was the other one. That was the first one we had a dam on. And that one we got close enough to see it, but it was so hard to see because it was underneath where we were standing. But a lot of these lakes and a lot of these state parks, you know, are created from dams. And they, why do they do that, Mike? Why are they uh, turning all these parks in? Uh, why are they damming up all this water out here? Honestly, we don't know that. I mean, so there's different reasons. I mean, they, a lot of them are creating fishing reserves for people. And other times, you know, they just want to set up a recreational area for people. But this is the third park we've been to that had dams. It's cool. I mean, and hopefully at one of these parks, we can actually get down up personal, up and personal um, with one of these dams. Yeah, because this is the closest we've come to actually a dam or a spillway of all the parks we've been to so from last year and this year. I see two kayaks there. What does that mean? It means we got boats, although it's raining, so we have to get out there and enjoy the water while we can. Maybe we get some good shoreline footage and other cool stuff for you guys. Yeah, guys, it's raining pretty bad. My phone's not, uh, my phone camera's not really that good on water resistance. I will do my best to try and get some shots while we're out there, okay? So wish us luck, and uh, hopefully this damn rain will stop soon. We'll talk, we'll see you guys in a little hey, bit. Everyone, there is my brother, Mike. This is actually his first time being on a kayak with me. So. How does it feel, Don't Mike? Let anybody know. <laughs> but if you take a look, guys, we are out. We finally got some boats. The rain stopped a little bit. So, Mike, what's your imp impression using someone else's boat with a broken paddle? It sucks. Yeah. So, guys, this is why we need you guys to subscribe because we need to get our own equipment because sometimes rentals just aren't the same thing. We'll try and get you some more uh, footage in a little bit. But otherwise, uh, hang on with us and hopefully we won't end up in the water. Talk to you in a bit. Hey everyone, just wanted to give you an update. We've gone a little bit up the lake right now. Mike is starting to get his stride. Um, unfortunately, his paddle, the, the lock that locks it from the paddle readjusting itself is broke, so he's kind of manually messing around trying to keep it going, so it's making it a little bit harder for him to work. This is why one of the things that we have on our bucket list of things to do is get our own kayaks and our own gear, so that first off, we're not waiting to uh, rent equipment. Um, from someone or getting you know equipment that shouldn't be rented out to begin with um, and all he was trying to do was trying to adjust the paddle if you're a kayaker like me you know you can adjust the, the angle of the oar so that you can actually get the best you know pull in the water to get the most power with the least amount of effort yeah it's kind of hard when you have to keep adjusting the paddle 
What was that, Mike? Kind of hard when I have to keep adjusting the paddle. Yeah, see, show them, Mike. Show them what you're talking about. See the way it is, guys? It doesn't click in. So, guys, I'm a pro. I'm a pro kayaker, or I was a long time ago. And the paddle is important. You can adjust the oars so that you can actually get a different angle on the on the paddle so that you can get deeper or lighter in the water for performance. And unfortunately, he has to keep adjusting it so he can get some uh, propulsion. So again, guys, if you're going to go out, my my best advice is instead of renting, unless it's a place that you've rented before and they actually have good quality stuff, get your own stuff. And kayaks, you know, are relatively uh, um, affordable. You know what and this reminds me of, Dave? What's that, Mike? Seven Lakes Challenge. Yeah, oh yeah, if you guys remember, if you guys were watching us, man, we did down a freaking 12-foot freaking canoe, and it was a pain in the butt. Man, wasn't it, Mike? We kept freaking getting wet, and just it was just miserable. Yep, we, and it was uh, definitely an experience. Yeah. So you guys, guys could check it out and laugh with us on it. Yeah, so guys, we're going to go ahead and do some more paddling. We'll get you some more footage in a little bit. Hey, Mike, I See think that. you got it, buddy. I think you got it. I'm trying. Trying real hard, folks. Now watch me sink. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. So as you see, there goes Mike right behind me. We're heading towards where the, uh, the uh, runoff for the uh, dam is. So we're going to try and get some shots of that for you guys. Hopefully we'll get a good shot without getting sucked down the slough. See you guys in a bit. Hey, Mike. Hey. How's it going, everybody? Well, this is the other side of the spillway that we showed you in earlier footage. You see this little line across here? You can't cross this line because you're going to go down that spillway and all kinds of shit can happen. So this, that's why they got a do not enter sign, sign right here, but that leads right into the spillway, which is the dam. First time we've been able to do this, because the last time they had a, something like this was when we were over at Potato Creek. That was a long time ago, wasn't yeah. it? I'd like to go back there and check out a better, close, better yeah, a closer view of their dam setup. Yeah, that one was like a solid concrete, the side that we saw. I think it did. But yeah. I think overall, this has been interesting. Finally, we got some boats, guys. We told you guys we were going to get on the water. Now the only and thing newbie, else... Newbie surviving. Hey, and you know what? Uh, you know what, Mike? You've done very well. <laughs> All right, man. Sir. All right, guys. So this was just a little trip. I mean, we were only got the boats for two hours. So we're gonna start doing a little bit more. Then we're gonna head back towards the dock so we can go get uh, to return the paddles and stuff. But um, I hope you enjoyed us on the water. Uh, comment if you'd like to see us do more of this because we definitely would like to do more. If we because a lot of the trails that we seem to go to, they do have water features that would be just interesting to explore. Especially you know me and Mike. Uh, didn't know that the spillway was here. We found the spillway and we were able to get the boats today for you guys and we we're able to get some footage of how how cool it looks and how close we can get before we go falling down the spillway. So I hope you guys enjoy this and I really want you guys to know we are having a good time and I wish you guys were here enjoying it with us. I'll see you in a little bit. Red because of the iron that seeps out of the hillside. And this this water is coming right from underground. Hey everyone! Well, we're on a, a rather difficult trail. This one's called the Red Springs Trail, and as you just saw from uh, the previous footage. It's if you, it, what it is. It's a bunch of hills, and there's a lot of water that seeps right through the hills, and it just kind of seeps down the hill. And since the water is all red, the reason that is is because there's a lot of iron in the water. Isn't that something, guys? It's all the stuff that flows underneath us, we don't even know about it. We got like iron flowing underneath us, and it's changing colors of everything, dude. It's I mean, just yeah, weird. that's like a bright pink red. That's that's really cool stuff. Yeah. 
Well guys, hopefully you're enjoying this little foray with us and hopefully we'll get you some more good footage. Indeed. length of time, you know what time it is. It is time for the final wood. Wood. <laughs> I said wood. Got it. <laughs> anyway, so it's time for the final wood. So, we're here at Whitewater Memorial State Park. When we first got here, it was, uh, <laughs> it was uh, raining and pouring, and the rain gods were not very happy with us. So, we managed to turn a bunch of freaking lemonades into lemonade. And here we go, guys. So, it actually turned out really good. We got to show you a close-up version of the dam, which was really cool. We were able to do that, that nice little red ridge trail, which kind of went down by the water, which was like uh, laced with iron from seeping through the, wall, through the walls of the canyon, which was really good. By the way, if you guys watched our episodes from last year, uh, Dunes Campground, you're going to see that the one, the one part of the, that campground, we actually went up that really steep stairs. Well, let me tell you, Red Ridge, the, <laughs> the trail Red Ridge here, it's just as complicated. Me and Mike were so tired by the time we got here, and that was only 1.2 miles. So that was, that was pretty interesting. We got to go on the water with kayaks, and you guys got to see my brother, his first time taking a kayak, and he did pretty damn good. And we are able to get you guys some footage. Okay, I, I, we couldn't get all the footage out there because, you know, rain here and there, but we got some good shots for you, I think, and I hope you liked it. We reviewed this wonderful screen house, which really saved our butt, especially when it came to cooking. When it started raining, we were able to get in there, stay dry enough to cook without our, our stuff being washed out. Then we got this nice Coleman tent, which was fantastic, guys. Usually, when me and Mike come out here, when we had our Kelty, and don't get me wrong, Kelty's a good brand, but when we had the Kelty out here, we don't sleep that well, kind of because I guess the tent's a little bit thinner. But let me tell you, this tent, me and Mike slept like freaking babies yesterday. We didn't even hear the alarm get off this morning. That's how nice and comfortable it was. Okay, we got a chance to walk around the park. We gave you guys a tour of the horse uh, saddle cabin, which was really cool. We got to get some pictures of the horses. So like I said, guys, this actually turned out, turned out to be really, really nice. And I hope you liked it, as you know. And then again, if you saw us on our Potato Creek episode back in Season 1, we, we wanted to get to the dam, but we couldn't because, well, there was, we didn't have the boats at the time, but we got to a dam for you guys. And we were able to show you the spillway. That was awesome. So, it turned out to not be bad at all, guys. And I'll tell you... If I was to say one thing wrong about this place that we didn't like is the trails are very, very poorly marked. But, besides that, I think we had a great time. What do you think, Mike? I think it was a good time. It actually worked out much nicer than we thought it would. Yeah, but now, guys, this is our last day here. We're chilling at the fire. Going to chill for a couple more hours before it gets dark. And if it doesn't rain on us, we'll stay out here until it's time to go to bed. And then tomorrow... Guess what, guys? We're heading to the next site. And so that's going to be another trip. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. And, you know, if you enjoy what you see, please subscribe and comment and let us know what you think. I think that uh, I think this actually turned out really good. And as I said, which is my favorite thing, but I'm going to add something else. Not only I want to see you at the next Campground of America, but you know what, guys? Never stop exploring. Have a great night. Love you all. Have a good one.